the larger issue here with, with the sex abuse being just one of the problems is that many of these men are simply unfaithful to the church, whether they're actually acting out sexually or not is, is kind of a secondary issue. They're unfaithful to the church because they are dealing with these psychosexual issues, and a man who thinks it's all right to have sex with another man, although he may not do it himself, or he has friends who are priests who do, how is this man going to stand up in a pulpit every Sunday and talk about the evil of contraception or cohabitation or committing adultery or being divorced and remarried? And is it, is it safe to say, do you think, that many of the uh, failings in the lack of zeal of appropriate teaching of the church that this whole homosexual issue is sort of part and parcel of all of this? Oh, yeah. That fits right into this idea that we don't are want to hurt people's feelings, whether it's from the pulpit, one-to-one, in any kind of business meetings, you don't want to offend people's feelings. And so when you get to talking about sexuality, you're talking about feelings big time. So that that comes out to the fore, and that becomes a real landmine, which everybody avoids, even to the point of not even talking about chastity or purity to young people. And there's where the church is suffering so bad. You know, but really, this is a problem with honesty. Because you think, uh, if you put a a priest who's got a homosexual tendency in the confessional, how about the young homosexual boy Mm -hmm. who comes in to go to confession? He's in trouble. You know, you have a duty to face this problem as a church and to root it out right at the bottom. And you can't stop until you get it out. For the sake of young boys, young men, for the sake of for the sake of the homosexual young men, you've got to protect them too. 